Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Bond Bench. And here we are now with part eight of the Apache build. Um, I've done a little tiny bit of work off camera because I thought there wouldn't be any interest for you to watch. So basically, what I've done, I've started off, where's my pointer? These clears parts here, here, here and here. I've masked them off, I painted the back of them black. Then I've masked them off using the mask from the Art Scale kit set, which is here. Which is here, Mr. Unprepared as usual. The Art Scale kit set, which is not even bad correctly, so I can't even show you the number. But um, basically it's the Art Scale kit masking set for the inside and outside. Um, so we painted the back of those black, masked them up, put them on, and then gone over the front. If you want to protect your rotor head from paint when you're spraying around there, just a piece of paper rolled up, just shoved over the top, and that will stop any paint getting on there. Um, what else have I done? I've added this piece on here. Uh, just a note, when we did the drilling right at the beginning, um, way, way back in the beginning, probably in part one, we did the drilling here. Um, and it shows you like here and it shows you, do, 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 do. it must be these two down here. There are moldings sort of in the side of the fuselage. You need to drill them perpendicular to the skin. So wherever you're doing any drilling, drill perpendicular to the skin. I thought it had to be done along the, the, the line, but uh, no, perpendicular. So they were a little bit too far out. So I've just um, sort of glued that on without the pins in place. Um, so done that. What else have we done? Fitted this little part here that I missed out before. I think that was D17 or P17. Um, and fitted these two parts here. There's one there, one there. Be very careful. If you look at them closely, you can see this little fillet in here that I'm just pointing out now. In the instructions, they tell you to fit, here we go, part E16 into this left-hand side. It's not, it's part E17. Because they tell you to fit E16, and then you go over the page, and in the other side, they tell you to put E16. So it's E17 in the left, E16 in the right, because they, uh, they are wedge-shaped. So if you put them in the wrong way around, they will look awful. Um, so basically what I'm doing now is going through and looking at fitting greeblies and stuff and building up greeblies. And this is something that caught my eye. This bit here. Oh, the other thing I've done, I've fitted these little things on the front, whatever they are. And gone round with Mr. Surfacer, just blended them in. So they're, uh, they're all blended in now. So I've been looking at this thing here, which is D50. And it ends up becoming that. So we've got to make that into that. So I've got the piece of the piece of photo etch off the fret. And I started doing it and I thought, oh, I'll film this because I think people would like to see this. So I've got D50 here all cleaned up and deburred and everything. So I've got the photo etch part here. Got it off the fret, cleaned it up. And you can see we've got some little... Let's put this light on. You can see we've got some little tiny groove lines here and here and they want to be like on the outside so make sure when you do this they're facing down so taking a metal rod this is just like a I don't know that's like an eighth diameter I'm just going to roll this on this on this sanding sponge I'm just going to roll it until it goes over center okay and I want it to go a little bit more than that just a touch more than that. There we go. Okay, and as we can see, we've got that one there. This one here needs to come over as well. So I'm going to go in there and roll that one over a bit more as well. Over center. And then this one here. I'm going to roll that one the same. So you can see we've now roughly got the shape. So if I get the tweezers and hold it down here. You can see now we've roughly got the shape. So what I want to do is make sure it's over center so it sort of clips and locks into place. So it's not, the glue's not actually doing anything, it's just locating it. It's the, the spring force of the brass is holding it all together. Now we can see that we've got a bit of a twist going on here. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna grab this one and just push it over. We really want this to go together without any stress. 
So it's sort of holding itself together, almost you could put it together without glue. So let's give it a go. So let's put that over there, like so. Drop that down there. And then that leg there can pop into the, there's a groove at the top of this part. I'm going to have to do this under the magnifier, I think, because I can't bloody see what I'm doing. I've still got this stinking cold. Today is Thursday the 25th of May, 2023. And I've still got this stinking cold, and my eyes are watering, and I can't see what I'm doing. needs to be twisted it needs to be bent up some more so I'm gonna get this done off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, when it's done but um I hope you get the general idea of how I've done this and uh, and you can do the same um, I'm also gonna to have to pull this about but as I said I'm gonna to have to do it under a magnifier because I really can't to, to me what I'm seeing now it's just a, I can see something gold on a white background. <laughs> it's uh, it's not very good at all. So um, let me get this done under the magnifier and then I'll be back. There we go, guys. <clears throat> all done, all glued up. I've put a large blob of glue in the back to um, to give it some strength. But uh, basically, from the top, you can see it's it's all rolled up, all folded up, and it's all nice and even when you look at it from the sides. If you mess it up, just take it out, roll it flat, start again. Um, but make sure before you commit to glue, make sure you got it right. So uh, that's my advice for that. So that can go in that stand there, ready for safekeeping. Uh, I'm not going to fit it now, just I build it up now. So we can come along and we can cross that off and cross that off because we've glued it on. So slowly but surely we are getting there. So it's getting to the point now where we're going to have to start looking at these levers and these um, handles and stuff. But before I do that, I want to start fitting some more photo etch. And I'm thinking about these here. And I think you guys can learn a lot from how I do this. Um, I'm not trying to say I'm the the big master or the big know or whatever. But um, it's just that I'd like to share my experience. So. I'm not trying to show you how to do things, I'm just showing you how I do it. And as we all know, when I just when I do it, it works. So if you do the same, it should work for you, yeah? Looks like I've got a pretty blunt knife here that won't even cut this plastic sheet in. So we get that off of there, right. Get rid of that. What I would normally do is just pull it all off one side, but I think there's a lot of this photo which we don't use. So I'm going to use it, keep it in the sheet for uh, for use, future use. Okay, I'm not sure if I've covered this in this video series before. But with photo etch, this is what I do. This is not how to do it. Always use a piece of acrylic or an old bathroom tile or something, or a new bathroom tile. Never cut photo etch on here because what will happen when you cut it, it will bend You'll, you'll distort it because it's soft so what you do is you cut it on here I always use a radius blade a lot of people use a knife like this and they'll go down or they'll pull back pulling back is fine but when you come to bits like this when you pull back you may well find you distort it so it's best to I, I, I think it's best to use a round blade and what I do is I run the blade up to the edge of the photo I should just roll it over like that roll it over like that roll it over then when you come to ends like this, you can get in there and cut like that, or you can turn it around and cut it like that. And then the same there. And then we can do the same here. And I always like to work so the part is on the left. Makes it easier to see. And then we just go around and just quickly check. We've gone through them all. And then we should be able to just get a knife under there. And lift the part away from the plastic backing just like so and there we go that's that one off and then we can do the same here 
get that one off of there, get that one off of there. And with these, it's quite important that we keep them straight. Been, these would have been much better made out of like the Tamiya Photo X, the stainless steel. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that around. Just making sure we've gone through. I wouldn't normally do this, but because these parts, we want to keep them straight. If I give it a tug, ooh misses, and any of the connectors are still there, it's likely to bend it. There we go, so we can get under that, just like so. And there we go, that one's off as well. So these are extremely fragile and they've got these cutouts in them which are just going to ask to bend. And then to remove the nibs, I tend not to use a file. I tend to use sanding sticks. So what I'll do is I'll come along with some wide tweezers like this and I'll hold that part in tweezers right next to where the sprue nib is. And then using a sanding stick, a very fine sanding stick so it doesn't pick up. That's like a 1200 grit that one. Okay, and that way we can remove the nibs to get on this side, get into here, holding both halves. Because what you should really do is, is sand along the length. But if you use something fine like this, it won't pick up. If you use something coarse, it will pick up and drag it and it will pull it away bend it so now we've got that done we need to come along the top we can see that we've got a very slight witness of a sprue nib there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish these off under the magnifier because I've left such a tiny amount on there I can already see where they are the worst thing to do with photo etch is to spray your model and weather it and then find a, a nib sticking out. It's, it just looks awful. So um, best to take the time to get it done now. Right, I'm gonna, I've done one. <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to do this on camera without messing it up. Because I can't do it through the magnifier on camera. So I'm going to zoom you in a bit. So uh, where's my zoom button? Here we go. So let's bring you in a touch. Okay, so you can probably see a bit better. Right. So, we have the photo etch, all cleaned up, all denibbed, and ready to go on. And I don't know if you can see there, but I've actually scraped that little bit in there, that little triangular section, and I've scraped it to just to rough it up. <coughs> After, excuse me, I'll cough. I can't turn the camera off and do all this and everything at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just put a tiny drop of instant setting super glue. On there that's the clear stuff okay so we can take this now and fit that into that cut out there like so and that should stay in place he says there we go I think that stayed in place okay so there we are so that's that glued down there so we just leave that for a minute or so to dry and as you can see the back end is springing up so what I'm going to do here is get another tiny drop of the instant and put it on the end there it's a tiny tiny drop and then make sure it's in the right position which is going to be my difficult part because I can't bloody see what I'm doing and put that down on there and that should stay okay so now we've got that down on there right so I'm just going to check is everything in the correct position it all just needs to go over just a touch so what I'm going to do here is take my the black glue, this is the VMS, the VMS black thin, put it on this blade like so, yeah, 
and then just run the blade down the joint. Keep running it down and you can pull the glue down the joint and it will capillary under. I'm just going to put a touch more on there and then take a cotton bud, flatten the end and this is the beauty of this VMS glue. It doesn't dry instantly so you can wipe it away and that is glued solidly in place in that area. Then what we do is take the, the knife and just basically repeat the same down here. And I'm just going to straighten this out because as we can see it's got a bit of a twist to it. Try and keep it all in line. We can see that wants to move over there so what I'm going to have to do here is somehow hold this over and get some Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Let's just see if I grab a bit of that the instant glue on the end of the knife. Just dab that in there. And that's held that in place. Okay, I'm just going to check under the magnifier I've got it right, because what we've got here is a there's like a flange moulded on with bolts in it. And that's what this is, the other part, it's like a piece of L section. And that need this this photo etch needs to be up against that plastic flange, so I'm just going to have a quick look under the magnifier. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, yeah, happy with that. So, just get some more of the the black glue on the knife. We're just going to run that down that joint, just like so. We've done. The little bit so we'll just take the cotton bud wipe the excess away we can see the glue on the other side so we, we know that it's done its job it's penetrated into the joint and then again we can push this down in here As I say, I'm making a bit more mess than I normally would because I'm struggling to see what it is I'm doing. Because my eyes are bloody watering. Bloody cold, it's a pain in the butt. So there we go. And that's that glued in place. And then what we can do is leave that for, I don't know, 12 hours or whatever. And then we can go over it with a with a brush. Uh, where is my brush? Do, 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 do. I can't get any hand. You've seen me use it before. It's an, oh, here it is. It's an RS brush and it's a fiberglass pencil. Just go in there and I'll take off any excess. And if it breaks the part off, we just glue it back on again. But that's how I do large pieces of photo etch. Use the edge of a blade and run it off. Um, I got that tip many, many years ago. The first time I ever went to Telford and I bumped into a gentleman and I bought some photo etch for a dragon wagon which had not long been released so you can tell how long ago it was and I told the gentleman I'd never played with photo etch and he gave me a quick sort of guide on what to do. Of course this is back in the day when you know Edward was hardly heard of. I think the photo which I bought was from a company called Royal Model. I've still got it. I've still got the kit. Okay, I'm just making sure that this is glued just to be absolutely certain that it's all stuck down. As you can see with this VMS stuff, you can just mop it up. It's brilliant. There we go. So that's those on. All neat and tidy, all nice and straight. So uh, 
Glad we got that done. Right, what's going to be done next? Right, so in my usual darting around doing everything style, I thought I'm going to have a look at some of this rotor head stuff because, like this assembly here, we need to make four of them and I want it to dry. I need to zoom back out, don't I? I want it to dry um, so it's good and solid before we move on to the next step. So here what they're selling is we've got this main sort of central piece here, which is what the rotor blade goes into. And then you've got these little tiny brackets going on to support these two arms here, A47. And then A21 is a piece that just slots in the middle and that turns it into a, a three part thing. So basically you've got this part here and then you've got, if I grab my tweezers and make life easier, you've got this part here is going to go into those. There's two slots inside there, you can see. And there's two tabs on there, so that's going to go into there like that. And you're just going to glue that in, and that gives you your three... Oh, I've got a brown spot on my finger. Don't think it's anything... I've made a cup of coffee and obviously got a bit of coffee on my finger. Um, so that's going to make that into like a three-bladed thing. So as you can see, the detail in this is just... It's stunning. Very, very nice indeed. Um, very nice indeed. So we're going to make sure that, that when this is on the sprue, the sprue connection points actually go onto the face, which is great in this case because it's a flat face and we don't need to be worrying about sanding in between detail so we just remove those last little bits of sprue nib and we're going to make sure that this is got the sanded face facing down so this is the upper face here so that's going to go in like that Okay, so with that in there like that, we can take some extra thin and just tap it in there, tap it in there, and that's that in there like so. Now something I want to do, just before we go any further, I want to look at what's actually going to go into here. Because I want to make sure it's lined up in all ways so that the next part's going to fit. So let me just go and check that. Here we go. So I've got the I've got the actual end part of the end of the blade there, and I've got 2.8 drills gone through there. So we know that that assembly is going to go together nicely now when we want to uh, do it again. So with that in there, we've now got these little tiny brackets here. We've got A45 and A44. These parts here, A47. As you can see here in the instructions, they go on to here and they f f sit in these two halves here of A36 and A35 and they're going to go in and, and sandwich in between there. So as you can see here, that's how they're going to get built up. Now, there is no point in putting these on now, <clears throat> this part, because I've only got one off. Um, that'll, that's going to go on there, but we have no idea of its position. So we can just fit those in after. There's no need to fit them in now. So there's another issue in the instructions. So while that's like that, what we can do is I've got a tiny piece of white tack here and I'm going to make a nice little blunt point on the end. And then what we can do is select which half's that going to be. That's that one. So I'm going to push those drills through a bit more to give you some more room to play. I've just picked another one up, so be careful of that. So that's going to go in there like that. So what we're going to do is put a tiny, tiny drop of cement in the back of there. And then we can drop that on. And I have not got a clue. I cannot see what I'm doing. You can just drop that on there. Let the glue take, and then we should be able to pull the blue tack away. And because the camera's on, it's not playing ball, there we go. And now it's sort of tacked in place with that little tiny drop of cement. We can get it, move it around, get it in the right position. So we're happy with it. Just like that. And then we can put a drop of cement down the side there. Once again, give it a little nudge. 
and that's how that's going to go together. So now you can see we've got that little piece on the side there. So now we need to do another one. So that's the right one there. So once again, make a little cup on the end. Tiny drop of cement into that hole. And then we can put that in place. Let's get those drawers out of the way. we are doing the wrong one, aren't I? Idiot. Yeah, I've picked up the wrong piece. So I want... That's the one I want. Just check, yeah, that's the one I want. So... Drop a cement in there. And I've picked up the wrong one again. Oh dear, dear, dear. Let me get this sorted off camera and I'll come back. I can't, I can't bloody see what I'm doing. My eyes are streaming. Okay, we got there in the end. So there we go. You can see we've got both of those brackets on there now. And as you can see, this part here, A47, and just fit in afterwards it doesn't need to go in now so there we are once again you need this this is what i'm saying you need to be careful with these instructions because whoever's doing this has probably never built a model in their life that you know why would you do that you, you glue them on now and then you come back tomorrow to finish it off and you find out you've got them in the wrong positions and they won't fit it's just it's just ludicrous so i just don't understand why you do it anyway so Moving forward, we can take these drills out now. So take that one out of there. You can see they're a nice snug fit. And then we can take that off of there. We've got one of our assemblies made up. What a load of faff, hey? <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it's a lot of faff, but when you look at the detail, it's, it's remarkable. It's, I mean, it's like the real thing. It's absolutely beautiful. So, um, fair play, Tacky. You've done a good job there. So I'm going to go on and get the rest of these done under my magnifier and then I'll come back and see where we're going to go from there. Right, so we got all our parts laid out on the bench now. So with this kit you get the option of having the rotors extended or having them folded. Um, with this one I'm going for the folded option. So cockpit all closed up, engines all closed up, uh, folded because you've got this lovely this sprue which is R which has all the lovely it's a framework on it and there's some great videos on YouTube of them actually using this and this is all bright red and shiny chrome and bits of aluminium and stuff so it's going to look really good um, in contrast to the to the helo drab um, so yeah I'm, I'm going to do this one with the folded rotors so I won't be using any of this I'll be using this here um, you notice here we have these little metal cylinders that go in you don't use them in the folded rotor you have these pins which are very shiny stainless steel by the look of it. So um, we'll have to paint those somehow and make sure they fit neatly and everything. Um, so basically, yeah, it's just a case of assembling this as per, as per the instructions. The other thing I am gonna do on this, I'm gonna have it armed. So it's gonna have its missiles and stuff on it and its rocket launchers and that, which is probably incorrect. It would probably never be sat there folded up and armed up, but it's a plastic model at the end of the day. But we all know an Apache with all its armament hanging off it and its great big gun and everything, it just looks the part. So um, when we come to doing the engines, you've got the engines here, I've built them up. And as you can see, I've put some metallic colours on them and everything, but the engine's going to be sealed up. So I'm not going to go any further with this. In fact, I'll probably leave these off and save them for my next one because they're already built and painted. Um, but I'm going to be sealing the engines up. So I have to spray in there with something silver, I think, um, because you can see through the through the intakes. I've got the intakes here off the sprues and you can actually see down into there. So we'll have to spray in there with something silver, but these here are just literally clipped on. So I think what I'll do is take those off and leave them off and save them for my next for my next build because they're already painted in metallics. They're already assembled and they are quite fiddly. So we'll have spares. So there we go. Right. Um, so let's get this rotor head together. So as you can see, we've got this part here, R17, going onto this base that we previously made up. Remember, we made this base up. 
Now something else that's not clear in these instructions, they're kind of showing you, it looks like you sort of put all this together. Uh, so this is R17, so that's going that way up. We've got these pieces here on the bottom and they're going to go over like that, okay? And then the piece on the top is going to go over like that and that sort of sits on there. If you try and put this on afterwards, you can see you've got these little, on here there's these little protrusions on there that's sticking out. Um, you can't actually get this on because you won't be able to get it between them. So um, what we need to do is make sure we glue this on first. So we're going to fit on that on there first and then when we come to fit these, we can push that pin into that hole which is there. We can push that into there and lever it up and then put a top one on like so and glue it down. Okay, so in fact what we could do is actually put that together without gluing it. So come along, oh we need to put that piece in there first don't we? Now this is designed in such a way that you can't put them upside down. If I try and put that in there that goes on really easy. I'm trying to hold this together in my left hand. If I try and put that on there, oh, hang on. What I had earlier was it wouldn't go together. Obviously, I was wrong. So, I'm not sure which is the top and the bottom or if they're just symmetrical. I think they are symmetrical. Yeah, they are all the same. Well, I had it earlier, and they wouldn't go. No, that won't. That one will not go on there. Yes, it will. I'm going mad. I think I'm completely and utterly losing it. It's all falling apart now, anyway. So that's got to sit on there. That's got to sit on there. That's going over the top. I'm not going to glue anything. I'm literally just going to glue down here. And down here and then grab a peg and clamp it together and let it dry down. As you can see it's all a bit sloppy, it's all a bit loose, but that's that's intentional. It enables us to fit everything up properly afterwards. So I've just got to do that another four times and we're away. So that's all gone together beautifully. Um, I could have sworn that these would not go together the wrong way, but I'm wrong. I thought they were, um, I thought they were like handed, but they're clearly not. So that's going to go under there. That's going to go on like that. That's going to go on the top there. That's going to come together. So cement into there. Just like so. And then clamp it together. And I've just thought of something. These here have pins and need to go in between. So I think what we'll do is squeeze them in before the glue dries. making sure this hook is facing inwards. So just literally turn that into there like that. That'll go in before the glue dries and that way we know we're good to go. Do you know what? I've got two of those Kitty Hawk MH60s now. Well, I've got an MH60 and an SH60. I'd love to build one of them because they're like this, they're just packed with detail. There we go. That makes life a lot easier. So you can see that you don't need to fit those in those earlier stages as I was saying just now. Well, just now for you, but <laughs> it was a couple of hours ago for me. So let that go off for a little bit and then we'll do the other two. And then we'll look about getting the top piece on. Okay, so <clears throat> all dry now, um, taking the pegs off. 
We've got a seam down there which we don't really need to worry about. I am just going to quickly go over it with a stick just to make sure it's got those sticky out bits that will look obvious under a wash or anything. But when these parts get folded down on the sides, that one's come out. When they get folded down on the sides, basically the seam will disappear because it hides it. I'm just, I'm just going over it to make sure there's no oozy out bits or just general sticky out bits. Right, so you can see now that what we've got is these pieces in here and they're basically going to fold around and they will lock into those, those end mounts. They're the bits the actual blades themselves go into. You can see they're going to fold around and go into there just like that. And these are the parts they told us to fit initially. These are those bits there, A47, that they told us to put in initially. You don't need to. So there we go. Now, I have just put up, as, as I, I think I said earlier, today is Thursday the 25th of May. Last night I put up part four. And I've just been looking at the comments. And was it part four or part five? I can't remember now. And some of you, well, a couple of you have said, do you think I'll have the same issues with my D-kit? Uh, you will. Um... But in all honesty, to be totally fair, the only real issues I think with this kit are the instructions, which I'm trying to help you with here, which hopefully will be a good help for the newer modelers amongst you, maybe even the more experienced modelers, um, and the sprue connection points on some of the parts are a as you know a complete joke. Another part that gets caught up with that is P. I think it's part P17. There, yeah, P17. This one here, this is like a little duct. It's there, you can see it in grey there. And it has a very thin flange and it has rivets all along it. And what they've done, they've put the mould seam, the, the, not the mould seam, the sprue nib, is actually onto the part and over the front rather than on the back where you could just cut it off and sand it flat which is like it is on these which is no issue whatsoever nope they've got it across the front and it's in between the rivets so the the designers at Tacom need to get a grip because they keep doing it they've done it for years I don't know why they do it there is no there is no excuse. Uh, admittedly, sometimes you'll hear people say, you know, they could have put the ejector pins on the other side. Well, it's like that. I've just reviewed yesterday that Hobby Boss Scammel Tank Transport with the awful trailer wheels with five ejector pin marks in each wheel. I can see why the ejector pins are there. They need to be there to push it out the tool because otherwise it won't want to slide out because you've got the the sort of the, the, in in cross section. If I if this is the wheel here, and I take a slice down through the middle of it. In cross section, you've got the the male of the mold two and the female plastic. It doesn't want to come off. You have to push it off. So I can see why they've got that. But why they couldn't put you know one big ejector tab in the middle, and then have a separate hub that goes over to cover it. Um, or you know have a ejector tabs around the outside edge. Is, uh, is beyond me really but um so that, that that's like an excuse it's not an excuse it's how it is but um with, with this with this scenario with this tack and kit there is no excuse there is no excuse I'm just putting some glue on here now to glue this this base onto the upper part That should all go together. That's still turning in there. I'm not sure if it's supposed to turn or not. It's another thing to be wary of on here. Nowhere does it say in the instructions, do not cement or anything like that. It just, just got arrows. Yay. Like it doesn't tell you not to cement. This part here, it doesn't tell you not to cement it, but that needs to turn if you want your rotors to turn. In this scenario, it doesn't matter. But we want the rotor to turn because 
we need to position it correctly when we put it on like so we need to position it correctly I think it's like that for the float for the folded blade so uh, here we go so that's glued on all nice and solid there we've still got these a bit wonky I'm not gluing them yet because I want to see what orientation they're going to sit in I might even just leave them loose but, uh, it is absolutely gorgeous if you look at that that's the underside and there's the top side and then we've got this piece going on the top this is R18 it's worth remembering here guys um, as I say I'm building the the folded rotor head option so that's why if you're not doing that that's why yours looks different to me than mine there we go There we are, that's all glued in now. So, as I say, we've still got a little bit of play in them, but I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm just making sure I've glued these parts. This is the trouble, I'm chatting away and I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. This is the problem Paul has when he's live. You, you're talking away and it's difficult to keep your mind because you, you're just talking to no one, if you like. There we go. There's lovely, see? Very nice indeed. So that's going to sit on there like that. And I'll have some more gear going down here. <clears throat> going down here. And it's all going to look really, really nice. So very happy that that's come out. I've now got to put the PE parts on, which I'm not going to do on camera because PE is a nightmare. But there are some tiny little PE parts. TPA5. And you can see them. Here they are here those tiny little parts across there so I'm going to do those now and then I'll come back and see you when they're done hey okay, moving forward um, <clears throat> this is the next area I was going to work on so that I can get the hub of the actual main rotor attached to the helicopter and then I'll deal with the folding blades later so you've got all these parts here you've got these two little t-shaped parts here a57 going in and you've got the two arms coming up, you've got this part F53 going on the bottom, and that is the part that actually glues to the helicopter. So we can see here, this is how it all goes. I was going to do it on camera, but it's so fiddly. So you can see there, that is how it all goes. The way I've done this was basically glue everything using extra thin, work really quickly, and then get it turned over and onto the helicopter as quick as you can. Because what will happen, it won't want to line up. And when you actually get it all together, When you can get it to go down, if I can get it to go down, bloody cough, um, that's going to go down over there like that, there we go. And then we're going to line up that bottom there and they'll click together. Obviously they'll need to be glued at some point. But that was why that piece at the bottom had to turn, even though the instructions don't tell you so. That's basically got to go together like that. As you can see, oh, I keep turning it, I keep moving it. But as you can see, it will go together just like so. So we'll squeeze that together with some little um, snaps or something. We'll hold it together and glue it. When I've got some paint on the actual main motor head itself, you can see that's going to go together like that. All right, so um, there we are. It's also another good reason to not have these all glued up because you can see when I put it together, look, it moves that. It moves those rotors on the top. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to be careful with the glue as well so as not to stick it to the shaft. That's how we can just glue it on the outside edges or something. But we'll get that held together with some uh, reverse tweezers that will keep it clamped and then. Get it glued together and that will be that. We also got to cut the top off our mass because we're going for the because we're going for the folded rotor option. It does tell you here. Where are we? 
Did I see that? There we go. It tells you here to cut the cut that mast off at its lower at its lower section. So I'm going to cut that off now, and then grab a sanding stick. Now we can drop that over there, just like so. There we are. So we could have done that right back at the beginning and had this shaft not in the way. But no, there we go. So, and it's telling us we need to put this F47 and F50 on there. So we'll do that eventually. Um, the way they've told us, told you to do this here, I don't agree with um, building up this rotor head and everything and having all these blades just sat there. It's going to be very, very awkward. Um, I would rather have the rotor head attached to the helicopter and I can position it then as I want to um, and get the blades on the back. So I'm not sure if the blades are going to be pivotable. I guess they are if you don't glue anything. But when it comes to here, it comes to fitting it all. No. Here, fitting it all together here. It's not telling you not to glue anything. So be very careful. Don't go gluing it all up. Make it all so it's flexible. But as I say, I'm going to do that once the rotor head is firmly on the helicopter and all the engines are in and we're ready for paint and everything. In fact, I might even do it after paint. Because all of the lifting gear and everything, all of this gear here is all painted bright red with aluminium bits and black bits and all sorts. So it looks very, very nice. So um, there we go. I've only got left 19 minutes. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. I think I'll have to get some paint on that rotor head and then uh, get it glued on. As you can see, I've got this area here masked off. That's painted with chrome. Um, I did have a wider piece of tape on there, but this wouldn't go down over it. So I've put a smaller piece of tape on there now. That will, uh, there we go. It's all looking good. So happy with that. I've already lost one of the photo etch parts there. Look, luckily I kept the old ones so I can replace that now. In fact, I've lost two. So there we go. That's good, isn't it? Brilliant. Right, I'll get those replaced. I'll see you in a okay, minute. Okay, push it forward. Found those um, photo etch parts. Replaced them. It's had a coat of uh, Mr. Surfacer black primer. And then I've just blown over it lightly with uh, LP65 rubber black. And then I've given it a very light dry brush. So you can see there the, the effect. Looking at it, some close-up pictures of a brand new rotor head on an Apache. Um, it sort of looks like that... Um, that sort of dark grey kind of bare metal look, you know, the sort of cast titanium kind of look. Um, and then these pieces on the end all look to be bright. Uh, the, the, these, these four end pieces, they look to be bright. So they're going to be painted in like a, a, a silvery colour. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I will. Um, but basically what I've done, I've glued it on. I've, I've found those photo pieces, as I say, glued them back in. And I've now glued it on, so it's glued down here. Um, I actually pinched it together using um, using my paint holding clamps. I got in there and pinched it together, got some glue in there, and then I've gone round the edges with uh, super glue, because that's obviously one piece, it's a one piece casting. Um, so that's all going to be painted and dry brushed together. So uh, all in all, looking good. And as a sailor, don't forget, if you're doing the if you're doing these, the folded blades, this part here is different. The, the top and the piece underneath it is different. So don't worry if you've done yours with a normal, um, with a normal, um, you know, extended blades. That it won't have these brackets on it. So whether they've got to be painted red or not, I do not know. I'll have to have a look. But uh, there we go. So very, very nicely detailed rotor head. Tucker, we've done a great job there. Really, really nice. Um, and all gone together. Beautifully, so we can now position it to put our rotor blades folded and that's that I've also just run over with some black paint over the photo etch and stuff here just to sort of seal it in and uh, Happy with how it's all come out. I've also sealed in those bits on the front there And I've gone around this bit on the bottom here just using up the black paint when it's in the airbrush So oh, and I've also painted those those little flaps there on the bottoms of the engines. So they're all done now as well so um, I think now I need to look at getting these engines in and getting those all closed up and getting the, the fronts on and everything. So uh, I think that's going to be my next part. There's one of those bits there. 
there's another one there so another one must have fallen off unless I had one left on the bench from when I was doing them, them fitting so um, I'll get that in the box because I'm bound to lose another one right so time to look at start and fitting these engines um, if you remember I did these in this colour this is um, Alclad Jet Exhaust and I didn't quite like the look of them they were a bit glossy and everything so I went over very lightly with a matte grey and then I was looking at reference pictures for the colour of the insider it looks like it's actually Helo Drab in there so that's what I've done um, but I noticed they had a bit of a sparkle to them so I've just dusted them over you can see I've dusted them over with like an aluminium colour so you've still got the grey there I've gone over this with over the exhaust with themselves with flat black and then I've gone over the flat varnish to take away any sheen so quite liking the way they look but uh, you're not you, you can't really see much of them anyway as you can see in that one that's installed but um, I just thought it's you know have a little play as we're here um, so I'm gonna fit these engines in now they've got two little tabs on them that go in and they're gonna go into that slot and then there's a little slot at the front and that's it they sit there I'm not gonna glue them at this stage because basically the front has to line up with this um, we've got this piece in here this this intake you can see there I'm pointing at here's one there it's got to line up with that so what I want to do I can get this out. What I've done, I've reduced my D-sprue down to a little bag of pits. So the intention was to get rid of the box, but I haven't been able to do that. So this is this side. So this is going to line up. There's a, a tang on the bottom of there that goes into a slot in the in the engine cover. And then the, that's got to line up with the engine like that, as you can see. So you can see that I've had to move the engine over to get that to line up. So we'll probably get those glued in position, actually. So we can't see any of the internals in here, so there's no point in painting any of it. Um, I think it would be worth painting this with Helo Drab and also assembling the bits that go in there, the, 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 um, the drives, the 90 degree drives. And these are actually, these are where the shafts come through to drive the, um, to drive the engines. Obviously I've got the wrong ass, that's the way it goes, isn't it? But basically that's how that's going to go together like that. Um, let's get the right halves. Oh, come here. So that's going to go together like so. And they're a lovely fit. I have dry fitted them. They're a lovely fit. We'll just run some extra thin around them. And then that is going to sit. I bet I've got the wrong one. Uh, yes, I have. That is then going to sit. Oh, no, I haven't. That's going to sit in there like so. Okay, so I think it'd be worth getting the inside of this painted helo drab and the back of this before it's glued together just so we don't get any uh, light grey plastic showing through. And we've also got these pieces here that go inside. Now I'm not really sure what's going on here but these pieces I've still got a bit of a sprue nib on there by the look of it. Um, these pieces are going to have to be painted as well. I'm assuming they're going to be like black and then we'll just dry brush it or something. I'm not exactly sure. I can't find any pictures that show this. But there are some mesh grills that go on the front anyway. They go on the front of here. So I'm not sure if they should be on there for all time or if they're just there for storage. But as this is going to be shown with its rotors folded, we should probably fit them anyway. They're here. And they've got some tiny little brackets over here that go on them. Um, I'm assuming they are FOD covers. But uh, we shall see. Um, so, let's, uh, let's get on and get this lot painted and then we can look again at assembled. Okay, so we've got some painting done. I basically painted the inside of those black, uh, dry brushed them with some silver. And as you can see there, we've got some foam shoved in there, put them together and painted them helo green. Leave the scene because it's a natural panel line. So that's what I've done there. Um, painted the inner faces of these because it's going to be difficult to get the paint in. So what we can do now is start to put this together. So what I'm going to do, get those out of the way, I'm going to grab some cement. Let's get this out of the way in case I drip any. So we're going to put this in position. And the engine will clip into the back of it. So that's that there. So I should be able to just put a drop of cement on the inside. I'm not worried about damaging any paintwork or anything because none of it is going to be seen. Uh, 
that needs to be held down I think it's not going down properly it's not being held up against the side of the fuselage let's get this back together again got a hair in there now or a scratch or something this paint is fundamentally made of Mr. Hobby which is takes a long time to dry that engine needs to locate in there properly as well. There we go. There we are, that's all together now. Right. So that needs to somehow be held down there. I don't quite know how I'm going to do that. I may have to put a drop of super glue in the back and just hold it until the super glue goes off because I can't really clamp it. Let's get a drop of super glue in there. Uh, have we got any fresh super glue on here? I don't think we have. Where's my applicator? There it is. No, that's not fresh. Let's get a fresh drop of the, this is the ASK Thin Instant Glue and this stuff is brilliant, believe me. Um, it really does, it is absolutely instant, which is great in some respects and bad in others. But in this respect, it's great. I should be able to put a drop down in there. That will hold this in place. There we go. See what I mean? That is absolutely instant. That glue is brilliant. Right, so that's there. So that engine is now held in place. Those exhausts are a bit on one side, aren't they? I'm not happy about that. It's a bit better. Just pull them about a bit and they'll probably just break off, no doubt. Right, let's uh, get the other side on. We can get this on here. It looks like this one might fit a bit nicer. A drop of cement down behind, let that capillary around. Yeah, and that one's also pulling up, so what we'll do is get some. This is where I need to be ambidextrous. So we'll get some glue on there, get plenty of glue on there, we'll hold that down, then we'll run some super glue in behind there. And there we go, that's gone down, lovely, and the engine sat in there, and the exhausts are good and everything's cool, and everyone's happy. Right. So, I'm a little bit concerned that I pushed that exhaust and I may have broken the joint. I think just in case, what I'm going to do is get some of that super glue. And get it down there. On the top of that exhaust where it meets the engine. course if you've got the D kit your exhausts are different than this and I think they're a lot nicer. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like these exhausts at all. I don't like the way they fit the engines. I don't like the way they're made in two halves. I, I, I think they should have made an end piece separately. They could have got the edge thinner then. But uh, I think these are a real let down. These exhausts, they're, they're not very nice at all. But, um, it's what it is. It's what we've got. So, I wonder how these covers are going to fit now. Look at that. They fit beautifully. There's a bit of a gap at the front there but I'm sure I can clamp that. Yeah I've got to clamp that. Just close that gap up. Just run some cement in there. And there we go. 
that one fits nicely. Will this one fit as nicely? There we are. That's got a bit of an edge on it there. There we go. It's almost like it's too wide. It needs material taken off the inside edge. We'll have to have a little play with it. Maybe give it a twist. It's, um, it seems to have a that inner piece is just sticking out in front of the in front of the outer piece, which is affecting the fit, and it's also pushing it over. I think. I mean, they don't need to fit perfectly anyway, because they probably don't fit perfectly in real life. Yeah, that certainly needs some playing with. Um, yeah, that's going to need some playing with that one. We also need to glue these in, but I'm going to glue those in when I fit the doors and then I can get the, the gaps all evenly matched up then. So there we are. I guess the other thing we could do here, and I, I was going to run some cement around there, but I won't do that because it allows me to flex these panels around. There we go. And then what we've got to do next is take our air intakes, fit a fan onto the back of them. I drilled holes in these so that I could put them on the on the pins. So that's going to fit on the back of there. And that, we can probably leave that as a press fit. I'm not going to fit these on yet because, um, because uh, the paint's not fully dried. Basically, that's going to go in there like that. That's going to go inside the engine and that's going to sit on there like so. So that's how that's going to go. It's not even straight. Yeah, I'm going to have to take some material off the outside. Oh, no, there we go. It's gone in there. There we are, that's properly, I mean, you could almost leave that like that, it's such a tight fit, it doesn't need to be glued. So that's that one in place, I wonder if the other one's as good a fit. So we get this done, we're on the, just over the hour, so we can get this done and call it a day I think. So that can go onto there, again that's a really nice tight snug fit on there. That's going to go into there. And again, that's a really snug fit going into the engine. And that's gone in beautifully. <laughs> there we go. We've got a snap together kit, guys. So there we are. There's our engines. You see there. All installed. That's all done. I'll have a little play with this cover. I'll let you know what I did to make it fit. But, um, it certainly seems like it's too wide because if I get it butted up against the side of the fuselage there it's sticking out on the hinge down here it's like the front is, just needs to go in a bit <clears throat> so I think what I'll do is take some material off of there just like so Let's see if that helps There we go. We'll get it in. We'll get it in somehow. I think it's got a bit of a twist in it, to be honest. I think it needs to be twisted like that. But uh, we can get all that clamped up. So when I come back in part, what's it going to be, part nine? Or is this part seven or part eight or what? I don't remember now. Uh, but the next part, whatever one that bees, whatever one that bees, whatever one that is, We'll get it all together, it'll all be together, and uh, 
we'll pick up from there. So we're getting there. We're nearly done. We, we've hardly got anything left to do now. So um, I'll see you soon for the next part. Uh, st thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.